Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about here is seeing the gas pressure sensor taking us through a safe start. On the main screen, we can see here the burner has been disabled. So first thing I'm going to do is turn the burner on. Now the burner is going to go through a safe start. We start off with a relay test. Now pressing on my gas drain, I can look at my gas valve setup. I got two main gas valves and a vent valve, and here's my pressure. First thing we're going to do is open the gas valve, the vent, to zero the pressure between the two valves. At this point, we're holding the gas between the valves and hoping this pressure remains. If this pressure remains, it means our downstream valve and our vent valve are not leaking. Once we've done that, we're then going to continue with the safety start. So now we're running to purge. The blower's running and the air damper is going to the full purge position. Only when the damper gets to the full purge do we actually start the purge time. So here we're running to purge. On this particular burner, we've also got a variable speed drive. So we can now hear the drive getting up to full speed. The damper has to be there and the variable speed drive has to be at full speed. Okay, we're now at full speed. We can then go through the purge period. And you can see here, we're going through purge. Our blower's running. When we get to the end of the purge cycle, we're then gonna run the air damper and open the gas valve to a light off position. And also reducing the speed of the variable speed drive. Okay, we're now at the end of the purge and we're now going down to the lie off. We can hear our drive slowing down. The air damper's closed off. Air damper, the gas valve is opened. We've now got ignition, pilot gas and ignition. We then stop the spark and just prove the pile of gas on its own. Only when we've proven the gas do we then open up the main gas valves. Our overlap time is adjustable within the flame safeguard, but only to UL codes. We then turn off the pilot and run the main gas and prove we have a stable flame. Only then do we release to modulate and then we start to fill up the box. All the time this is going on, I can see my flame signal here. Pressing the history, I can see the flame signal strength versus the firing rate. Okay, so the Mark 8 is a 12 and a half inch touchscreen controller, which will control everything on your boiler, including the burner, the water level, lead lag, draft control. This one box is gonna do everything and we're going to be using up to four fuels, four servos, two variable speed drives, and it will come programmed from the factory, but it has to be commissioned in line with your burner. So this one controller is basically going to do everything on your boiler. With the main Mark 8 screen, this is a touch screen, so we can press anywhere on the main screen and it will give us more information about the product. As an example, I could press here on the top of the boiler where we see the steam bubbles and the pressure. When I press on here, that will then take me to what we call the status screen. Now on the status screen, we can change the set point by pressing on these arrows. And that would change my set point that I want the boiler to run at. So here I'm changing the boiler to 50 PSI. My actual pressure, which you get from a steam sensor, or if this was a hot water boiler from a temperature sensor, is 124 PSI. Now this is a class one safety device with a built-in flame safeguard. By pressing on the scanner, I can actually look at the flame safeguard and also the history. And same with the firing rate, I can zoom in on this graph to see more detailed information. But again, we're going to get 24 hours of data.
we have test inputs and trigger a shunt. This is time related. What that means is that when we trigger the shunt switch, it means we're going to shut off the feed water and test all the levels on the probes without turning the burner off. So this is our trigger shunt switch operation. Again, going to the config, I can look at all my options. So here we have over 160 different option settings. So we can customize this controller to exactly how you want your boiler to operate. As an example, option number one, this is set for medium pressure boiler. It could be temperature, low pressure, high pressure, or we can even take in external inputs. If we have any faults on the system, I can press the fault button and look at all my lockouts, which are time related. So it tells you when the lockout occurred and when it was reset. So if someone's going in and keeps on pressing that lockout reset, that could end up in a potentially dangerous situation. So we have lockouts, we have errors, alarms, warnings, which are things which aren't necessarily um, something we want the burner to shut down, like a pre-high water condition. It's just letting us know that we've got pre-high. And we also have 15 first outs, which can be totally customizable to your particular operation. Again, with this system, we have a full lead lag, which we call intelligent boiler sequencing. So at the top here, I have an IBS screen. If I press on there, I can see all my boilers. And with each micromodulation system, we can sequence up to 10 systems. On this particular rig, we've only got one boiler. I can also see the history. So this would be of all my boilers. Again, 24 hours of data. Other areas on here, we can go and look at config. So by pressing the config button at the top, I can change the picture on the front of the controller. Now again, everything is password protected and there's a number of different passwords. Just for simple, we've made this zero, zero. So on here, I can change what that picture looks like. So we can change the system by changing a number of different options, but we can't rewrite the logic. So this is not a PLC. And for example, the boiler type, I could click on boiler type, and instead of looking at a two pass fire tube, which we were currently looking at, I could make this into a vertical coil just by selecting number six. If I exit out of here, we now have a, a coil boiler with a separate steam column. With Mark 8 being a touchscreen control, you'll find there are other systems on the market which also use touchscreen capability. What we've got here is not a PLC. This is a fully UL listed C approved controller, not just from a fuel air ratio control, but also from the same flame safeguard point of view. Now, of course you can use a PLC and program it in any way, but that will not be approved by UL, CE, and any other approval body in the world. So all the logic in here will meet every standard in the in industry, whether it's UL or CE. So flame safeguards, uh, first safety times, flame response times, it's fully within the UL and NFPA code. Okay, so just looking back at the Mark 8, comparing it to a PLC, um, there's a lot of concerns in this day and age with cyber security in PLCs getting hacked or even anything in our homes being hacked by outside sources. Um, it's becoming a real issue. With the Autoflame Mark 8 and the Mini 8 Control, this is not a PLC. So it cannot be influenced by outside sources. The code we write within our program is hard written to an e squared prompt, which means it cannot be changed by an outside influence. Now, in many applications, the boiler room is gonna be at the basement of a building, maybe a hospital or a school. When you're mixing fuel and air, you've got the potential there where you could have an explosive a uh, mixture of fuel and air, create an explosion within the boiler room. The last thing we want is someone getting into the system, hacking in through a back door, 
and closing off the air damper, making the boiler a very unsafe control. So with our system, it is not PLC. It cannot be accessed remotely. We can't tie in through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. This is hard written code within the controller. I can also disable the burner by pressing these time related buttons. So as I press on this button, you'll see it will start to gray out and that can turn the burner on and off. Also, we have low flame hold. That would then drive my burner to the low fire position. By pressing again, we'd release it to modulate. If I want to put the burner into a warming type condition, I can press the hand button. Once I press hand, I then get these two arrows here so I can increase and decrease my firing rate. Take it off hand, and then we're back in the modulator. I was talking about the time clock or setting run times. So here, these are my run times. Now this is how my burner is going to operate. So on Monday, it's going to be on until 3.05 in the afternoon. Then it will be run at the reduced set point. If I want to change any of these, I can just click on here and by dragging these buttons around, I can now say my burner is going to be off until 11 o'clock, then it will come on, then it will run at a reduced set point. And I can drag as many of these as I wish, move them around. If I want to get rid of them, just drag them up and they go away. So now this will be off, on and reduced. So this is how we can switch between our two set points. Set, exit, and that is kept. All of this information that we're seeing here is logged for 24 hours on the Mark 8. So by here I can press on the history, and now I can see the historical data. This is my pressure. Here we have firing rate. And just like your iPhone, I can zoom in on these screens just by pinching and zooming in. Or alternatively, I can show everything that's happened in the last 24 hours. We also have a, a second set point that we call a reduced set point. Now at the moment, this isn't operational because it's grayed out, but I can change this to a second set point that may take effect when the process has stopped or if this was a, a school, when all the children go home, we could switch to a second set point. That second set point would be active either by a line voltage input into the unit or by using a scheduled time clock within the system. Now the air sensor, the Mark 8 is the only product which uses a solid state sensor for air pressure. Again, pressing press the history button, I can then zoom in to my air pressure and then looking at the full 24 hours of data. So for each point on our graph, we'll set the air pressure. We've got the upper limit and the lower limit. Here we've got the fuel servo positions and the air pressure for each of those points. We can look at our gas pressure on here, we can see our commission value, and this is the upper limit and the lower limit. By pressing the history button, I can then look at the last 24 hours of information on both the commissioned and the actual. And if I want to look at a specific point in time, I can zoom in. So right here is my commission value and underneath is my actual gas pressure. So if ever I get a problem with my regulator, it's very easy for me to see here that my, regula my regulator is either hanging up or we're getting a droop in the regulator. Right here, we're looking pretty good. We're actually very close, almost within one inch of our commission value. By clicking on any of the servos or the variable speed drives, I can look at the angular positions and the variable speed. This particular ball has been set with one VSD, variable speed drive. So that will speed up and slow down the blower 
as the burner modulates from low fire to high fire. Again, this is a historical data, so we can pinch and zoom in on these graphs. Clicking on the flame would show you my fuel air ratio, how the burner has been commissioned. So here, this would be low fire and up to high fire. And these would be all my positions of my servos. And remember, these servos are controlled to 0.1 accuracy. So here we can see fuel is at 50.2 air is at 53.3 and just the slightest movement will be picked up on the controller. Okay so looking at this screen here we're looking at the um, looking at the water level side of the boiler this is obviously set up as a uh, water tube so we've got a mud drum down the bottom here and our steam drum at the top we've got our two probes so here we are looking at water level using capacitance probes now, of course, you've still got to have your auxiliary shut off, which is normally done using a float control or a conductive type probe that you cut to length for your boiler. And that would be used for your second load. On the Mark 8, we can either use two probes or one probe. This example is using two capacitance probes within the boiler. Each one you'll be setting the control point, your high, first low, second low. We can also option in pump on, pump off control, or we can put in pre-high and pre-first low. Now, depending on the level of the water in the boiler, we can speed up and slow down the feed water pump, or we can control a feed water valve. This example is showing a pump rather than a feed water valve, which would be here. Again, this information is logged historically within the system. We also have an onboard technical manual so this manual is exactly the right manual for this controller. So if I look at the dimensions or wiring of the controller, I can see all that information right here. I don't need to go and get a book which may not be relevant to this particular control. The system log is something we added for the US market. And this will log the last thousand things that happened in our boiler room. So for example, I changed the run times so run times changed and I changed Monday and that was the time I made that change. So this is going to log everything that happened and like I said the last thousand things. So this is our boiler log sheet. We also have a diagnostic button here. If we press diagnostic I can see exactly my processor temperature, my mains frequency, my voltage coming into the system and it will tell me when it's hit too high voltage or too low voltage. Give me some good information. So maybe in our boiler room we've got a big um, compressor running or an auxiliary main supply unit. Every time that kicks in we may see an increase in our voltage. This will log it. Okay what we've got here is the Autoflame exhaust gas analyzer. This analyzer can be used in conjunction with the Mark 8 controller. So we can use all this information of exhaust gases to trim the burner. Or we can use it as a safety device. So we can start to set limits on CO, CO2, um, exhaust gas temperature, or even NOx. So the unit itself, if we go to the main screen here, we can see the exhaust gas coming in from the probe in the stack. Now the probe in the stack is just a filter. That filter comes down into a chiller inside the EGA. That's going to drop the exhaust gas temperature to around 66 degrees F. Once we've taken all the condensate out of the exhaust gas, we then take that through a series of filters, a pump, through some switches, a temperature sensor, and then we put that gas across the cells. When I say cells, we're talking oxygen, CO2, CO and NO. They're just the standard sensors. Additionally, we can also add SO2 and NO2. We add NO2 if we really want to calculate our NOx correctly, not just measuring NO and correcting to give us NOx. Now this 12 and a half inch touchscreen is the same touchscreen we use on the Mark 8. Looking inside the unit, we can see exactly the same as what we saw on the touchscreen. This is our chiller unit. So the sample gas comes in, 
the condensate gets taken out through a drain solenoid and the dry gas comes out through the top of the chiller. Once it's dry, it goes through the filter and then goes through our pump and to put across the sensors. The sensors themselves are electrochemical sensors apart from the CO2. This is a unique design using infrared technology designed by Autoflame. Using the Autoflame EGA, we can use this just as a standalone device. So it's not going to be used with the Mark A burner combustion system. It's just going to be used to measure the sample gas on the stack. So this could be used on a turbine or any combustion process. One that's used in that way, the fuel input will be taken directly through a plug in the bottom of the unit to select the fuel input. Going to config, we can go to fuel setup and here we can put in the type of gas we're using, the cost of the gas, the units, the flow source and the flow metric units, whether it's metric or imperial. And this can be set up for four different fuels, fuel one, two, three and four. Typically fuel one would be natural gas. So here, knowing the fuel I'm using, this unit can be used as a full SEMS EPA approved analyzer. I can press on any of these points on the screen to see us our pump, barometric pressure and inlet pressure. On the sensors, I can press on the, press on the sensor and see the concentration of all the gases. A dry concentration, mass flow and a volume flow. Here we're graphing that information and I can pinch and zoom on these graphs to see concentration in PPM or concentration in percentage. Going to the config screen at the top, I can also look at my fuel setup, I can set my clock, my run times, I can also look at cell information. Cell information will give me some really good data about how good those cells are in health and how they're sampling that gas. So here I've got my percentage in health and my average in weeks. Now this unit is going to store up to two years worth of information. So here I can go from oxygen, CO2, CO and NO. And here I can see the health of this cell is actually very good. I've also got a 4 to 20 milliamp input signal to look at the gas flow rate or oil flow rate, whatever we're looking at as a fuel. Based on that flow rate and the cost of the fuel, I can look at the tonnage of emissions and also see how much fuel I've been using over a long period of time. Okay, now on most burners, whenever you set the burner up, you need to measure the combustion to make sure the fuel air ratio that we're setting within the system is gonna be the most efficient and also safe operation. Now, if we have a, an exhaust gas analyzer, the Autoflame exhaust gas analyzer connected to the system, we get this additional box. By pressing on this box, it will show us the oxygen, CO2, CO, NO, NO2, if we have a NO2, and also the SO2. Maybe we're burning heavy oil. So the EGA will use this information and send it back to the Mark 8 controller to make small changes to either the air damper or the speed of the variable speed drive, bringing the combustion back to exactly what it was when we originally commissioned the system. Now some applications mean we can't actually take a sample of the exhaust gas. A good example of that would be a dryer application where we're adding a lot of air for the dryer straight into the combustion zone. Obviously if we measured the combustion at that point we'd have a very high oxygen level meaning it would be impossible to set the fuel air ratio curve. In that type of application we add meters to the gas and also the air. Now these meters can either be mass flow or just a volume meter. If it's a volume meter we'd then need to measure the temperature of the combustion air and the natural gas and also the pressure giving us a mass flow. Now by using those two mass flow meters, that is gonna give us exactly the right fuel to air ratio at each point on the firing curve. The nice thing with this system is that 
if we ever lose the meters, we have a backup with our positioning of our servos, our channel one and channel two. So we'd commission the fuel air ratio based on the volume or mass flow of air and fuel. But if they failed, we'd revert back to the normal parallel positioning control, meaning we have a full backup 